Hello my quilting friends! Welcome to this special tip video from the Machine Quilting Block Party. Today we're going to talk about fabric, how to prepare it and get it ready to go for our mystery quilt along, and a little bit more information about the colors that you can choose and working with yardage versus working with scraps. So let's get started. So let's talk about the fabrics that I've designed for this quilt. I'm using Island Batik Cherry, Nasturtium, Lemonade, and Cream. But I really wanna encourage you, if you don't like these colors, please play with the different colors that you like, a color palette that you really like, and go with what you like. Notice that these three colors are basically next to each other on the rainbow. You know, red, orange, yellow, first three colors of the rainbow. So if they don't, exactly fit your style, go with the last three colors of the rainbow. Just completely switch them out. So go green, blue, purple instead, and that's gonna look great too. I really wanna encourage you to make this quilt your own and to feel like you can change these colors up as much as you need to. So please understand, I've designed the quilt. It's gonna look great whether you use exactly these colors or you change them up to a different palette. So now let's talk about the background color. I've chosen this cream, Island Petite Cream, and it's a beautiful off-white color, but you could also do black, gray. You know, the background's really totally up to you. My one piece of advice would be though, to go on ahead and buy three and a half yards of one color. The reason being, this is going to be the color that ties every block together. It's gonna to be in the background of every single block. This is also the same fabric is used as the borders around the block, and it's gonna be the binding that connects the block together. We're gonna to have a little half inch binding across the top. It's gonna to connect the blocks together, and we'll have the outer binding that goes around the entire quilt. So in the fabric calculation, three and a half yards will give you enough fabric to do all of those things. So that's why I would advise going ahead and get three and a half yards uh, rather than trying to make that scrappy because you might end up with situations where, you know, that kind of just looks a little weird. But that's just my opinion. Please understand, um, this is just coming from my perspective. I'm one of those anxious people. I want to make sure that I at least have, you know, matching uh, borders and binding. Binding especially makes me crazy if it's mismatching. So that's just one of my quirks. <laughs> Another thing that's open to you is using scraps. Pull out your scrap stash, go through it, uh, organize your fabrics by color. So if you really want to have that red, orange, yellow look, pull out red and orange and yellow scraps and see what you can cut uh, out of these pieces. Within each block pattern, you'll find that I've included uh, the in amount of fabric recommended for that individual block but a lot of times that's actually more fabric than you need. It will always be more fabric than you need. I usually will write a quarter of a yard. Now the reason I'm doing that is that most quilt shops won't cut you a smaller piece. You can't go into a quilt shop and ask for, you know, four inches wide, they won't cut it for you. So for that reason, pay attention to what the block fabric requirements say, but also pay attention to what you're actually cutting uh, in those colors. And you'll probably find that you can definitely cut most of these blocks from your stash. So now that you know a little bit more about the fabric, let's learn how to prep it so it's ready to go for cutting and piecing. So let's talk about fabric prep. This is one of those things I know, I know a lot of people like to skip. You're excited, you're ready to jump in with both feet, and you wanna just start slicing fabric. But I'm telling you to please take your time and pre-wash your fabric before we get started. And the reason is we're combining cream and red. And this is a notorious combination that results in pink. And that's not really what we're going for here. So at least pre-wash your red. Um, make sure that there's no excess dyes that are going to end up migrating into your lighter colors. Uh, one thing that I do to test is I'll throw in a 10 inch square of solid white fabric into the wash and then check that with every time it runs through. So I'll check it, and if there's any discoloration, if I see it's kind of slightly pink, that's a sign it needs to run through again. I also use dye grabbers. They're like little sheets that can pull out the dye in the wash. Uh, but sometimes, especially, you know, batiks especially like to bleed. I ran these through three or four times before they had washed out all the excess color and I could trust it to be sliced and put into the quilt. 
So give your fabric a wash, double check that all the excess dye is out, and next let's learn how to starch it. So my favorite starch is Niagara brand spray starch. I like it because it comes in a spray bottle and it doesn't have a really, really strong smell that drives me crazy. So when I'm spraying this on, I'm really lightly spraying. Notice that I'm not getting a big puddle or anything on this fabric. I once let my son starch my fabric for me and I had like literally puddles of starch in it. And then when he went to press, of course, most of that starch did not want to bond to the fabric. It was so much of it, it wanted to flake off on the iron. So, you know, that's really something you want to avoid. You want to get it wet, you want to get it all the way damp, but you don't want it sopping wet. That's not what we're going for here. Now, while I'm spraying this on, I know that there's gonna be 50 million people that are saying, well, starch and bugs. And yes, there's been kind of a smear campaign against starch in the last few years about it attracting bugs and beetles to your quilts. Well, this is or, you know, cotton fabric. That's an organic substance. Bugs are attracted to cotton and wool and you know, and all of these materials, whether it has starch in it or not. And the reason why I use it is because it gives me the control that I need for cutting and piecing precisely. If I didn't have it, I would not be able to piece my blocks as accurately. And even better, starch washes out. At the end, after we quilt these blocks, we're going to rinse them and rinse out all the starch. There's not gonna be any risk of bugs being more or less attracted to your quilt than usual. Okay, so you'll notice I'm giving this a massage. What I'm doing is encouraging that liquid to bond with the dry fabric. They don't really want to go together at first. And then the second thing I do is I make sure to flip over the fabric so that it's the opposite way that it was when I sprayed it. Why do I do this? This extra step, just flipping it over, ensures that any excess liquid that would want to bond and flake off on the bottom of my iron is going to instead get pressed against my pressing board so that when I go to press, my iron's not going to stick to it. Now, starch is not going to start flaking off. It's not gonna be problematic. So take your time to do this. Understand that this is such an important step in the process because it's going to make it so much easier to cut your strips and squares accurately. So the next step is to square our fabric so it's ready to cut and we're gonna be able to cut nice straight strips that are lined up with the grain line of the fabric. And if you don't know what that means, definitely check out my book, How to Piece Perfect Quilts. I really go into a lot of detail about grain line, how fabric works, why it's so important to take this extra step. So I'm gonna hold it up. We're gonna do a little fabric dance to get this square. So here we go, I'm gonna hold it up and I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth. And watch that bottom edge. That bottom edge right now is way out of square. It's pulling forward on this side. It's pulling back on this side. I've got kind of a diagonal line. Here I'm gonna pull it the opposite direction. Now it's pulling forward on this side and pulling back on this side. It's out of square. And now I'm gonna pull it, just wiggle it back and forth until it's lined up nicely and balanced and forming a straight line across the bottom. That's nice and square. Then take this to my pressing mat, lay it down carefully, and I'm just gonna run my hands along that bottom edge. Now I'm gonna pick up that bottom edge with my hands grab the two fabrics at the top, kind of grip it all together, and I'm gonna do that fabric dance again, wiggling it back and forth until I don't have a bottom corner pulling forward, I don't have any kind of weird diagonal look. This is a sign that the fabric is nicely aligned and the grain line, you're gonna be able to cut with the grain line of the fabric. So this is ready to go. And I'm again just going to gently press it with my hands. I don't want to take this and press it with my iron because as we're cutting, this could shift, this could get out of square. And I want to be able to easily get it back in a square, do another little dance and be able to fix it. So I'm going to cut and show you how to cut fabric very accurately. We're going to cut some strips here together. So the first thing is you want to trim this edge so it's square. So I line up my ruler 
and I'm using the thin line on my ruler so I can see that that's perfectly lined up with the second fold. We've got the first fold that we put into the fabric when we held the two edges together. Then we've got the second fold that we just did where we folded that in half again. And that's what I wanna line up to. So this looks good. I'm gonna press firmly and cut away from myself. Now, notice that I did not use the lines on my mat to make that cut. I don't trust the lines on my mat because they can be different from my ruler. And here's another key. Always use the same rulers. So I use these Olfa frosted rulers. These are my favorite rulers and these are the only rulers I cut with because they have these thin lines that I can really see and accurately cut. I don't like using mixing matching lots of different rulers because each one can have different requirements for how they're laid out and it's really easy to make a mistake. Now you'll notice I'm ambidextrous. I can cut with both hands. I know not everyone is like this. So if you're cutting and you can only cut with one hand, then you will take your fabric and flip it, making sure everything stays in nice alignment. So here we go, we're gonna line up four and we're gonna line up the bottom fold. And that looks good. Take your time with cutting. This is one of those things. You can really mess up your fabric by getting in too much of a hurry and cutting sloppy. So really take your time and then double check yourself. When you unfold, when you know your fabric will be out of square if you see a little V kind of going outward or a little V going inward at these folds. The folds will really let you know if you're square or not. If you see that, don't panic, don't worry and don't judge yourself. It's a learning process, right? But if that happens, go on ahead and take your fabric, unfold it, shake it out, do that little square dance again. Square dance, that's kind of funny. Uh, do that little squaring dance again, put it back on the mat, trim up the edge, and then cut your strip again. And what you'll find as you get used to doing this, you'll know if your fabric, you know, your ruler wiggled a little bit as you're making that cut, you need a square again. You'll start really getting the hang and feel for when you're cutting square and when things are wiggly wobbly and not quite accurate. So the biggest key with this, if these are new techniques to you and you've never done them before, I want you to just try them. It's always worth it to try something new. You might not like it. It might be slower. It might be more time consuming. It might feel a little tedious if you are, have had a very different way of preparing your fabric and getting ready to make a block. But I promise you, this is one of those things that makes the biggest difference with whether your fabrics piece together easily and match seams perfectly or they're way off. So I really hope that you'll give this a try. See how it works, run through these steps and build these new skills for preparing your fabric. If you'd like to join in the fun of the machine quilting block party, click here to pick up your first block. Until next time, let's go quilt.